In this video, we'll do an exam review on the cerebral perfusion pressure and cerebral blood flow. Now, what cerebral perfusion pressure? Cerebral perfusion pressure is the difference between the mean arterial pressure and the intracranial pressure. Normal mean arterial pressure is 100 millimeters of mercury and intracranial pressure is less than 20 millimeters of mercury with an average of 7 to 15 millimeters of mercury. So, the cerebral perfusion pressure pressure is 100 minus 15 is equal to 85 millimeters of mercury with an average of 70 to 100 millimeters of mercury. So cerebral perfusion pressure is the difference between mean arterial pressure and the intracranial pressure and the mean arterial pressure is 100 and intracranial pressure is 15 millimeters of mercury. So CCP is 85 millimeters of mercury with a range of 70 to 100 millimeters of mercury. Cerebral perfusion pressure maintains relatively constant cerebral blood flow to meet the metabolic needs of the brain tissues despite changes in the blood pressure. So if there is a decrease in cerebral perfusion pressure then it increases the risk of cerebral hypoxia. If cerebral perfusion pressure is less than 60 remember normal is 85 so if it's less than 60 it causes ischemia. Normal is 85 millimeters of mercury with an average of 70 to 100 and when cerebral perfusion pressure is less than 50 then it causes permanent neurological damage and less than 40 it causes infarction and if zero it causes brain death so normal cerebral perfusion pressure is 85 millimeters of mercury less than 60 causes ischemia if it's less than 50 it causes neurological damage and less than 40 it causes infarction at zero it causes brain death now cerebral blood flow so what's cerebral blood flow. Cerebral blood flow is the amount of blood passing through 100 gram of brain tissue in one minute. So it's 50 to 60 milliliter of blood that passes through 100 gram of brain tissues per minute. And the total cerebral blood flow is 750 to 900 milliliters per minute or 15 percent of the cardiac output which is 5 liters. So cerebral blood flow is the amount of blood passing through 100 gram of brain tissue in one minute and it's 50 to 60 ml per 100 gram of tissue and the total is about 70 50 to 900 milliliter per minute or 15 percent of the cardiac out and in the brain cortical blood flow is more than the subcortical blood flow and CSF perfusion and CSF pressure remains constant over a wide range of blood pressure the brain preserves perfusions over wide range of blood pressure so CSF pressure remained constant over wide range of blood pressure. Cerebral blood flow is generally constant under different conditions. If there is an increase in the venous pressure that decreases the cerebral blood flow by compressing cerebral blood vessel that leads to decrease in perfusion. Number two if the blood pressure decreases then it preserves the cerebral perfusion by arteriolar dilatation and if blood pressure increases it preserves the cerebral perfusion by arteriolar constriction. So decreased blood pressure preserves cerebral perfusion by arterial dilatation and if blood pressure increases arteriolar vasoconstriction preserves cerebral perfusion and increase in venous pressure compresses the cerebral blood vessel and maintains the cerebral blood flow. Cerebral blood flow is also influenced by pH carbon dioxide oxygen. Earlier we studied that cerebral blood flow depends on cerebral perfusion pressure and then the effects of the blood pressure, effects of increased blood pressure, effects of decreased blood pressure and effect of increased venous pressure on the cerebral blood flow. Now we do the effect of pH carbon dioxide and oxygen on the cerebral blood flow flow and perfusion. Cerebral blood flow increases with acidosis and hypercapnia that is decreased pH and increased carbon dioxide increases the cerebral blood flow and in alkalosis and hypocapnia that is decreased carbon dioxide there is decrease in cerebral blood flow. Effects of carbon dioxide, oxygen and pH on cerebral blood vessels. If there is an increase in PCO2 there is cerebral vasodilatation that leads to increased cerebral blood flow 
flow. And if there is decrease in carbon dioxide, then cerebral vasoconstriction leads to decreased cerebral blood flow. As opposed to carbon dioxide, if there is decrease in oxygen, the effect is reversed. There is cerebral vasodilatation. So when there is decreased carbon dioxide, it causes cerebral vasoconstriction. But decrease in oxygen causes cerebral vasodilatation that leads to increased cerebral blood flow. And when there is increase in oxygen, it leads to cerebral vasoconstriction and decrease in cerebral blood flow. So effects of increase and decrease in oxygen is opposite to the increase in carbon dioxide. And number three, if there is decreased pH or increased acidity, that causes cerebral vasodilatation that increases the cerebral blood flow. And if there is increase in pH, that is alkalosis or decreased acidosis, that causes cerebral vasoconstriction and decreases the cerebral blood flow. So summing up this, that increased carbon dioxide, decreased oxygen and decreased pH leads to cerebral vasodilatation and decreased carbon dioxide, increased oxygen and increased pH or decreased acidosis leads to cerebral vasoconstriction. Other substances causing vasoconstriction are adenosine and vasoactive metabolites. They cause local vasoconstriction. This cerebral autoregulation is disordered in traumatic brain injury and focal cerebral ischemia.